Welcome back to Afternoon Garage. Well, if you've been following this, we modified the lift, took the battery pack out, disassembled the battery pack down to the module level. So now we're ready to start testing. But before we do that, we're gonna have to figure out a safe and quick way to test all these battery modules. There's quite a few batteries in here. There's 315 batteries, uh, 21 cells per module, 15 modules. It's quite a few batteries. Another thing is, is there's just a lot of current involved here, so I'm gonna have to figure out some way to connect onto these things to safely charge these batteries, and most importantly, not make it take all year long. So let's get a battery on the bench, open it up, see what it looks like. So here's module 15 right here. It's pretty good. Uh, we got uh, some torque screws. I think that this cover is behind this cover is the BMS, which controls the balancing of the individual pack. Another thing is, I'm not wearing gloves anymore because uh, potential is about 20, 22 volts on these things. And uh, each cell pack is going to have about 3.2 volts on it. Not really much chance of getting any sh electrical shock or anything like that. Just want to make sure and put these gloves back on when you're dealing with the whole pack. Now to get these modules apart for testing. This is called the MBB. What this does is it has different lines in here and uh, it measures the voltage and actually will apply a little more current during charging during a balance cycle uh, to these individual packs of three in, in here. It also has temperature sensors. That's what these blue lines are in here. And uh, that's uh, sent out serially to the BECM. So this contains all the uh, electronics necessary to make sure and balance these cells. There's a tab to press here. This battery is ready for testing. Now another thing I like to do, uh, this panel came off here. You can see it has that label that I put on there. Um, I also like to put the same label on this BMS here. Uh, they have the same part number up here in the corner. I am not quite sure if these are different or not. In fact, I believe that they're all the same. But uh, I'm going to put a label on that to make sure that this gets back in with this unit. One thing to know about this, it's in a 7S3P configuration, which means there's 7 cells in series, so it'll be 3.6 times 7, and then there's 3 cells in parallel within those 7. So each group of 7, each one, has 3 cells. Each one of these cells can deliver 20 amps. So if you have three 20 amp cells in parallel, that'd be 60 amps. So we're gonna have to come up with a way to test these batteries and somehow pump a lot of current into them and not get some test leads hot. 60 amps is a lot of current for even uh, a 10 or an eight gauge wire. So the first thing to do, the module like this, is get this off of here, get this uh, heat sink material off of here so it doesn't get damaged. There you go. Just make sure you got the majority of it coming off. But it's full of this liquid which has kind of come out of this it's heat sink material here. Anyway, set this aside where it can't be damaged. We're going to leave these in, although these can come out. These provide support when you put the bolts in there. They're probably just to make sure that the battery below it doesn't get crushed. And this is actually one of the top ones, so the bolts would go through that way. We'll leave those in there for now. We want to look at this right here. 
Okay, these here are our, our connections. I said you had a 7S3P, so you have three cells in parallel, three cells in parallel. Another three cells in parallel in series with uh, another three cells in parallel. And so on. You have seven sets of those. So the goal here, you want to contact this with enough contact area that you're going to be able to pull at least like 40 to 60 amps. So initially, I'll take some measurements here. So I want to take the entire pack voltage and also determine where plus and minus is and mark that. So in this case, this is the positive terminal. That's the negative one, 23.82 volts. So another thing you want to do is you want to measure the individual sets of three and record those on a data log as well. So we'll take the first one, 3.42. Remember your polarity switches. 3.40, and 3.40. So you want to record all those measurements and uh, see if there's any big deviation in any of them. Since these are all connected together, you could probably do something like that. But again, this wire, which is probably 16 gauge, <laughs> nor these alligator clips, are they ever going to be able to handle 40 to 60 amps? That's a lot of current with that little small little wire there underneath this alligator clip. Not only that, when you look at really what's contacting in an alligator clip there, eh, it's just some teeth. That's really not going to work at all. And I suppose you, you have some people that say, you know what, just have, put a whole bunch of them on there. So, I guess you could. You could do that. And that. Or maybe something like that. But is that really going to carry 60 amps either? Likely not. So these things, they have a little more contact area. Although, if you look at the top of it, when it really contacts, kind of oval shaped in there. Really not going to contact much of anything. So I guess you could go like this. But man, look at that small little contact area you have there. You're going to probably generate some heat there. Even if you put 10 amps in this, it's probably not going to work very well. This clip isn't going to handle anything over 10, 15 amps either. So what we really need to do is we really want to just connect right onto the surface here. Uh, so my thought was, get some metal and put it down inside of here and increase this contact area as much as possible. The greater the contact area, the greater the current you can handle. So I think I'm going to get some metal to fit inside of here, kind of space it apart, and have one big contact area just, just kind of fits over this whole thing. So here I've come up with a piece of 3 16 by 1 bar stock. Fits in between here. A little bit loose. So I think what we want to do is get a few of these in here. Okay, I've cut myself three pieces. And I think that's going to fit in there. Kind of like that. So you can put one there and there. You can put one here and there. Um, and then so on here and there, here and there. Um, I think this is going to work pretty good. I think the most important thing is to make sure and get the spacing right so that these are going to be able to sit in there and sit in there flat and flush. Another thing is we need to find some way to hook onto this electrically but this contact area that's great that's going to work just fine. So now we'll figure out how to weld this up with this 0.1 inch spacing here, tenth of an inch spacing and uh, make it fit in between these tabs here. These are our tenth of an inch washers. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll stack these washers on here to create a little airspace in there. And then uh, we'll weld it up like this. And then I'll just push those washers 
out of here when the ends are welded up. It'll take some half inch by eighth inch stock, weld it right on there like that. Here's what we came up with. Those washers put a nice tenth of an inch spacing in between. And uh, I welded that tab on there. That's going to be able to, that's a eighth of an inch thick steel. Got these nice and flat in here. That fits really well. So now what we'll do here is we'll, we'll get another one, put it over here, and uh, tie our high current lines to this. And then we're going to have to find some way to clamp this thing down to the battery, I imagine I'll just use a, a hand clamp there to make sure to press this thing down to get good contact. There's a lot of testing involved here, so this is really nice that this is uh, kind of just fits in there really nice and easy. Really happy with that. I'll have to make four of these to test two batteries at once. Now to charge these batteries up, I purchased this. This is called an iCharger 4010. So what it can do, is it can charge 40 amps at 10S, which means 10 cells in series. This is a 12 volt, 75 amp power supply. So one good thing about this, is this has regenerative charging. So what you can do, is you can take a battery source in here, and discharge it in here through the unit to charge another cell. Now that's gonna be really handy. So after you discharge the first set, then all you would merely be doing would be cycling each battery, discharging and charging it. We'll note how much current it takes, how much time it takes to do that, and any deviation in that would indicate a bad cell within the three set of cells in parallel. The other option to that would be to hook up a resistive load to this and discharge one cell charge it back up. Discharge another one, charge it back up. Using this eye charger, we can do regenerative charging. Work on two batteries at once. Would not recommend working on two sets of cells within the same battery. You're going to get some feedback because they're kind of all hooked together. So you definitely, when you do regenerative charging with this, you want the cells to be completely independent and separate, not connected together in any way. So we'll have to use two modules. A left module, and a right module and keep track very carefully which one's been charged, which one hasn't been discharged. Another complication to this, if this is the positive lead, this is the negative lead. Well, as you move down the battery, this ends up being the positive lead, that ends up being the negative lead. If you go one more cell down, this ends up being the positive lead, that ends up being, so you can see what happens is, is your polarity is gonna switch also. So not only will I have to keep track of what I've already charged and what state it's in, I'm going to have to keep track of the polarity. The eye charger will actually tell you you have the thing hooked up backwards or not without, you know, it won't start a charge cycle unless everything works out. So even though I'm going to be using regenerative charging, I still need to have that first discharge and an ability to discharge 40 to 60 amps through that charger. 
That charger will only do 40 amps, so that's kind of what I'm going to shoot for. So what I purchased here, so I purchased uh, 0.1 ohm resistors. You go 0.1 ohm, that's just about a short. Yeah, that's pretty much what I would call a short. In fact, I don't even think the meter is going to be accurate enough to read 0.1. Uh, in fact, it, it floats around 0.2 or, or 0.3, but needless to say, these are 0.1 ohm resistors. So another thing is, as you calculate that, it's going to be well over 200 watts. And in my experience, even though they say 100 watts, you wouldn't want to put 100 watts through that resistor there. So I'm probably going to do something like this, where you have 2.1 ohm resistors in series here, and then put them in parallel. So then this whole thing, uh, it would be a 0.1 ohm. Do something like that, and then tie these ends together hook onto this end and hook into the middle, then this whole resistor network, which will be 0 0.1 ohms, and you can see since there's eight resistors, have the capability of 800 watts. Like I said, these things are way overrated. So 800 watts, I'm gonna be using, discharging maybe 200, 250 watts. It's plenty of capacity. This is kind of the sticky thing about this here, is, is that uh, uh, discharging all this current all at once Seems like a lot of current to discharge at 60 amps in, in an hour. Man, that's a lot of current. So you want to make sure and be able to get rid of that amount of heat. These things will help a little bit. Well, we'll talk about, a little bit about cables to hook up to this iCharger 4010. So this is what they give you. A little bit short. Probably uh, 12 inches long here. And... Um, so this is kind of what they expect you to charge 40 amps with. I don't know how this is, wire is going to handle 40 amps. It says on here, 12 AWG. Now, that looks more like 10 to me. But if it is 12, there's no way that this is going to handle that kind of current. This will for sure be able to handle the current. It's got uh, copper terminal lugs. It's got really heavy duty banana plugs here. They fit much tighter too. They're made out of a different, made to handle a lot more current than, than these other ones. And plus this is eight gauge wire here. So we're gonna go from 12 gauge here to eight gauge here. So this is truly gonna charge and discharge this battery at, uh, at the 40 amp load, the max load that this thing can handle. Put a nice heavy current lug on there. I'm gonna bolt that together there. Okay, now what we have is we have a set of test leads. And there you go. That should be enough to provide you 60 amps. I think the limitation is going to be the charger at this point. This looks really good. And also I'm very happy that we're not gonna have a heat buildup problem, which could possibly damage those pouch cells. So next week, we're gonna go and test these batteries, see what kind of results we get, and uh, record all this data onto spreadsheets, analyze it, and see what we get. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. I really need as much support as possible to keep my YouTube channel growing. So if you know anybody that would like this content, just let them know.